Ski jumping is one of the most remarkable of all Olympic events. Athletes soar like birds through the air, powering off huge scaffolds, then floating and floating on down the hill, landing gracefully after flight. Today, USA Nordic takes you behind the gold with world champion Sarah Hendrickson. This Friday, the Fist Ski Jumping channel on YouTube will feature Sarah as a part of its Live Classics series, replaying her historic win and hill record in the Predazzo World Cup in January 2012. It was the debut of the World Cup season for the women. Hendrickson came into the competition with two wins in three events, but it was in Predazzo that she put her stamp on the season, sweeping two competitions and setting a new hill record. Sarah went on to win the World Cup title that year, then a year later took World Championship gold on the same hill in Val de Fiume. In 2014 at the Olympic Winter Games in Sochi, Sarah Hendrickson wore bib number one as women's ski jumping made its Olympic debut. And Sarah, welcome to Behind the Gold. Glad to have you with us. Thanks so much for having me. So you're hanging out in Carbondale uh, with your boyfriend, Torin. What has life been like there for you the last few months? <laughs> yeah, um, so I've been uh, going to some community college classes um, right here in, in Colorado. And um, yeah, obviously with the virus, it's definitely a little bit of a life change, but um, just been sticking to my studies. And luckily, we live in the beautiful mountains, so we can get outside and hike and bike and um, we were still skiing like when when things started to shut down in March so um, I feel very fortunate that we have the great outdoors to kind of keep us distracted but um, now now the weather's getting warmer and just kind of seeing where where everything plays out. Cool given that you're kind of in the outdoors in the mountains of Colorado has have you been able to keep up on the type of training that you'd like to do this time of year? Um, so it's a little bit different for me. I'd say I had a back surgery in December, so I've kind of just been rehabbing and, um, with my rehab, it's pretty much a lot of just body weight stuff, some core and some basic, um, athletic stuff. So really I haven't needed a gym. I can do everything at home and outside. So, um, for me, it hasn't been a big impact on that, on that side of thing, but I imagine that, um, a bunch of my teammates and people around the world that don't have access to those gyms and facilities right now, it's, it's kind of a difficult time to be an athlete. Yeah, it's been challenging. And talking to different athletes uh, over the last few months, one of the things, particularly for those summer athletes who were pointed to Tokyo this summer, their ability to just pivot and make a change and keep going. You've had to make a lot of pivots in your career. So I think as an athlete, that's something that is, if you're going to be successful, you have to be able to pivot. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my heart goes out to those um, 2020 Olympians that were, um, you know, at their peak and ready to go. You you plan not not for even four years, but your entire lifetime for for these moments and to get this th curveball thrown at you um, is, is quite difficult. But um, like you said, as an athlete, you kind of learn to adapt and um, through injuries or whatever it is, uh, you just have to be able to kind of fight through it and kind of reformulate your plan and keep going forward. Yeah, so we're going to uh, uh, talk in a little bit uh, uh, about your background, but just to uh, preview for everyone, uh, on YouTube this Friday, uh, Fist Ski Jumping is going to be rerunning your 2012 victory in Predazzo, Italy, and we're going to talk a lot about that and some of your other uh, successes uh, in the, in this interview. But just to give the, uh, uh, the viewers and the listeners a little bit of an idea of your background uh, growing up in Park City, how did you first get into ski jumping? Uh, that, at that time, it was really a pretty new sport for the women. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when I was a kid, I, I grew up in Park City. My brother and I were on alpine skis by the age of two and three. And um, I was really kind of motivated by him. He has started ski jumping through an after school program um, a couple years before me. And then also the 2002 Olympics um, was a huge motivator for me to try the sport of ski jumping. Um, they did an excellent job in Park City kind of bringing kids out and trying the different Olympic sports that we got to view in those 2002 Olympics. And between that and my brother, um, it seemed like kind of a good time to try it. And I really fell in love with it. It was really the only organized um, snow sport that I have, had ever done. I never did alpine skiing. I never did freestyle skiing. Um, I played soccer, but, um, you know, I always skied with my parents on the weekend and we got the honor roll pass because it was, you know, quite affordable. But when I started ski jumping, it was just, um, I had so much fun. It was such a great community and um, I just fell in love with it and um, obviously grew with it for a lot of years. 
you know, even though women's ski jumping is still in its infancy, you really are kind of a second generation. And who are some of those early heroes that you looked up to in the sport? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, really in the nineties, like people like Lindsay Van and that saw again, I'm from Norway. Um, some Germans were the ones that were really not taking no for an answer. And then in the early two thousands, of course, my teammates, like, um, Jessica Drome, Lindsay Still, um, Alyssa Johnson, Abby, Abby Hughes, now Abby Rehnquist, you know, they were really at the forefront and I was able to join them, um, even though I was quite a bit younger than them, um, for those Continental Cups that started to become more frequent. And then, of course, when we got World Championships and World Cup circuits, um, we were the power team. You know, reminiscing back and looking at some old results, I think you were just 13 years old when you first went over to Germany for the Continental Cup. What was that experience like? I mean, you, what were you were just in middle school still? <laughs> yeah, um, it was, you know, I was pretty young, but um, I had a really, really close relationship with Lindsay Van, and she was kind of like my older sister. And so like, she had a good relationship with, with my mom. And so... I think my mom just felt comfortable sending me over. I went by myself, obviously with the team, with the coaches. And um, it was for those Continental Cups and also my first World Juniors in, in Poland. Uh, my mom did actually go and watch that. And that was just the start. I mean, that was the first year I went over for, you know, once a winter. And then from then on, it was twice a winter, three times a winter until – um, those World Cup season, World Championships, when we were just spending the whole time over there. So it's pretty crazy to think that a 13-year-old was traveling to Europe, you know, with with just teammates and a coach. But um, I think that's, um, I grew up pretty quickly. You know, 13 and going to the Continental Cup is one thing, but a year later in February of 2009, you actually won a Continental Cup in Europe. And this is the top level in the world. You beat your childhood heroes and you're just 14 years old. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it was kind of a, it was an interesting event. It was definitely weather dependent. Um, and, you know, I was jumping well, but I, um, I, I wouldn't say it was one of those normal, totally, totally fair events. But nonetheless, it was a, a great kind of motivation and a taste of that winning that I, I wanted to be the best in the world. And that just um, kind of propelled me to train harder and work with my team and um, be the athlete that I wanted to to become for the later years. It was just a few weeks after that that your teammate Lindsey Van won the very first world championship gold. Do you remember where you were in watching that event and what your reaction was that watching your hero win that gold medal? Yeah, I was actually competing in Libretta as well. Um, I was kind of a late add on to that team. There was I remember there being some um, disagreements with adding me to the team because I was so young and I don't blame them looking back now, but, um, it was, yeah, me, Lindsay Van, Jessica Jerome and Alyssa Johnson in 2009, first ever world championships. And it was just snowing so incredibly hard and the conditions were so tough and I really struggled. That's a very difficult hill. But um, yeah, I remember watching Lindsay in that final jump and obviously coming down to win and holding the American flag up. And it was, yeah, it was definitely uh, a memorable experience. You were a part of a wave uh, that saw a lot of evolution uh, in your career. You've seen the start of the World Cup. You've seen the Olympics. Uh, you've seen the World Championships. Uh, going into that 2011-2012 season, that was the first year for the World Cup. Uh, you had finished six, I think, uh, in the Continental Cup uh, prior to that, the season standings. But what were your thoughts going into that first World Cup event in Lillehammer in December of 2011? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously we're so excited to finally have a world cup circuit. I think the thought of like it being on TV was just like mind blowing to us. Um, but you know, I still just had this passion that I just wanted to ski jump. I was never thinking about results. I was never thinking about, I don't know, the competitiveness that it would bring. It was always just a pleasure to be a traveling around the world with, um, my team that was we we had a lot of difficulties but we were so close-knit and so um, good at working together and bouncing off each other because we had such different personalities um, that it just worked out so well and so that first World Cup I think I didn't really have any expectations I was just jumping because I love to jump we had had a great 
training year going into it on and off the hill and it was just kind of like well here we go a new era and it was a, a privilege to be a part of it yeah you and and for those who may not recall you actually won that first cup uh, world cup uh, in lillehammer uh, picking up the debut win you picked up another win uh, uh in january and then you came into Prodazzo and do you do you recall kind of the, the the feeling? I mean, you were obviously at the top of the World Cup at that point, uh, very competitive field. You were young; you were just seventeen years old at that point, coming into the hometown of your coach uh, Paolo Bernardi. Uh, what were your thoughts going into Prodazzo that weekend in January of twenty twelve? Well, it definitely was kind of our second home. Um, I think we've had you know, we had had some training camps there. So I knew, I knew the hill. We also stayed at an amazing hotel with great food and Paulo being, you know, kind of the hometown um, hero. If you, if you want to say that just because he, he grew up there. And so everyone knew him. So it was just, everyone knew this team that was coming in that he was coaching now. And um, you know, we were on the road for so long. So when you come to a place in this little Valley in Italy, that kind of feels like a little bit of a second home. And it definitely felt like that um, for those next couple of years through world championships. Um, it just gives you a little sense of peace that you, you really want to feel when you're on the road. So um, I think I had had two wins. Yeah. Like you said at the time and um, really liked this hill. And again, just was doing what I do and um, ended up um, going pretty well that weekend. But um, it's just so fun to look back at those memories. So to uh, set the stage, and we'll be able to watch this on uh, Classics Live on YouTube uh, beginning this Friday. Uh, so it was the first day of a two-day event, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, in the first round, uh, Daniela Arashko uh, took the lead with a jump of 107 meters. You went 105. Do you have a recollection of your thoughts between rounds there? Um, it's really hard, actually. You know, when you're... I mean, I, I feel like I was super excited with that 105 meter jump, um, pretty far for a, for a hill size, gosh, 100, 106, 106. That's what I was going to say. So they were really letting us jump far, which makes me super happy. Um, but you know, go into the top for a second jump and you're in second place. Um, you could either put a lot of pressure on yourself to say, I'm this close to winning, or you could say, I have nothing to lose at this point. So um, I think, um, I was nervous, but just excited that they were giving us enough speed to fly far. And, um, yeah, you definitely, that's something, a, a test of your mental strength when you're, um, coming from behind for that second round. Yeah. Danielle had, I think around a five point lead. So you had a little bit of ground to make up. Uh, so you would have gone second from last and we'll watch this on a show beginning this Friday. And you put down one of the most magnificent jumps. I took a look at it again this morning, and you just flew down that hill, 107.5 meters, a new hill record. <laughs> oh, man, it just makes me smile. Like, those were such amazing times, and um, there was just no fear. I mean, I hadn't been injured at all up to this point, which um, – you know, a lot of people know I've gone through a lot of injuries and with that comes a little bit of fear when you come back and you have to jump far again. But in this season, just so much trust in my coach and my team and my preparation that, you know, I went 107. I'm pretty sure I landed in a telemark and I think got pretty good style points and just, you know, just exploded with emotions. It's just so fun to have a, a good ski jump and to be able to trust your mind and, and everything that you put into being an athlete and have it come out on competition day. And um, yeah, it was a great day. You did an interview that next morning before the Sunday comp and talked with the reporter about, about that jump and just reflecting back. And it's fun to watch this because you're 17 years old at that point and you know you've all of a sudden found your way to the to the top you're leading the world cup uh uh how did you take that momentum into the second day on sunday it's a weird thing with ski jumping um it's really really hard when you're not jumping well but when you're jumping well it's just super easy and super you know that introduction that you just talked about about floating and flying it's very peaceful and when you're jumping well and your technique is all dialed in and your body mechanics are dialed in it's really effortless and when you don't have pressure on yourself because 
in a sense, when you win on a Saturday, you kind of already had a successful weekend. So then Sunday comes around and you're just like, well, whatever happens today, I still had yesterday. And um, amazingly enough, with ski jumping, that takes a lot of pressure off and usually you jump even better. And, um, and that's probably exactly what happened. It was just like, well, I know, I know how to jump, just going to do what I did yesterday and nothing to lose. Already had a good weekend, have a hill record. And, and just go from there. Well, those those uh, two wins gave you four for the season. You went on a, about a month later in Zhao, Japan, to clinch the title, uh, mm-hmm. the first time the World Cup had ever been held for the women. I want to fast forward uh, another year ahead to 2013. You went back to Predazzo, but this time for the World Championships. Your teammate, Lindsey Van had, had, had won that in 2009, and you were now in a really pitch battle with Sarah Takanashi from Japan. She had not been in Predazzo the year before. She'd been at the mm-hmm. Youth Olympic Games, and you guys had been going back and forth all season long. Again, you had to come back on that second jump to win the gold medal. Go back to that time and just re- reminisce on that jubilation that you showed us in the finish area. Yeah. Oh man, World Championships 2013. Um, hands down, my my proudest moment of my ski jumping career. If I'm going to be completely honest, and this definitely, I remember the nerves, and I remember standing at the top knowing that Sarah and I were neck and neck I think maybe a couple points between each other and just you know had to lay it down I mean there was no room for a 96 meter jump if you wanted to win and I remember you know we we tie our boots super tight you have to get them the perfect tightness and I remember putting my skis on you know bindings checked everything ready to go and like I kind of lost feeling of my feet because my boots were maybe too tight and oh man, my heart was just beating so hard, but your brain is amazing. And you get into that state, they kind of call it like the state of flow and the Mm -hmm. optimal performance. And that is one of the times in my career that I can honestly say I was in there because there is no way that if I was conscious that I, if I was going off my conscious mind, I would have been able to perform that jump and, you know, I just, muscle memory is amazing and preparation is amazing. And so you just, I got on the bar and once I saw my coach flag me, which is just um, the sign that everything is safe. And it's so much more than just, you know, a flag of the arm. It's you're safe, you're prepared, you're ready. I'm trusting you. And, um, you know, that takes a lot of years of trust to instill that in a coach. And you know, once I saw that, it was just like, here we go, and um, push off the bar, get into my in run, and just and just let let that flow state take over. And um, that day, I was able to perform, and oh, it was it was amazing. It was, um, and my teammates were all at the the finish line and hugging me, and it was just um a a moment that I will never forget because I got to share it with those people and ski jumping is an individual sport of course but those five girls or us four five including me I mean we were just such a power team and like I said we had our struggles but man did they put aside all their own results on that day and run out and hug me and hold me above their shoulders um like like it was their own victory. And that is truly, truly amazing in a world of sport. You know, I, that next summer you had a training injury and I don't want to delve into that, but I want to take you out to Sochi. Your battle to get to Sochi was long and hard. What was your emotion in wearing that number one bib and becoming the first woman to compete in the Olympics in ski jumping? It's actually funny because, um, since I've had, I had such a winning season going into those Olympics, but I hadn't competed in any of the world cups. Um, I was unranked in the world cup rankings and that's why I got bib number one. And I remember our coach handing it to me and I held it up and I was like, Oh no, bib number one. I don't know how to, I don't know how to time it, you know, because I had been used to going at the, mm-hmm. the end of the round. I know exactly when I need to tie my boots. I know exactly when I need to go get my skis for my wax tech. But all of a sudden I was like, bib number one, like how many forerunners are they going to be with? What time does this thing even mm-hmm. start? And Lindsay looked at me and she said, Sarah, you're number one. You're going to be the first girl to ever ski jump in the Olympics. And I was like, 
oh my gosh okay that's pretty cool and I put it on Twitter I think like after the first training day like I'm bib number one I'll be the first female to ever ski jump in the Olympics and I got like it was like 20,000 retweets I mean it was just exploded and um you know it was hard because I was world champion going into that I had won a world cup globe and um I recovered in five months from an injury that should have taken gosh 10 or 12 months and I wasn't in great shape mentally or physically in terms of trusting my knee I would say and it was really a grind to get there um and so it was a little bit frustrating to not be at the top of the game and definitely had to give up that goal that I was going to be a medal contender because I couldn't put that pressure on me and walk away disappointed because I knew it was just unrealistic so that was definitely a hard pill to swallow but um, I remember standing at the top um, maybe before the second round and looking around like our little warming hub of all these girls there was 30 girls from around the world and thinking you know we weren't really competing against each other but we had all competed to be here mm-hmm. against the International Olympic Committee against all the people that had told the women no for so long. And that, that is also a memory that I'll never forget and sharing that with some amazing women from around the world. Sarah, we've missed you on the jumps, but over the last few years, I know you've been following this sport. Uh, what do you see in some of the young athletes coming up today? Oh man, on terms of the, in terms of the international level, women's ski jumping has just um, exploded. The level of competition is rising and rising every single year um some tremendous ski jumpers from around the world um i mean i think in terms of the world junior championships there were 61 girls from 15 16 nations this year which is just a tremendous number and so i'm not concerned at all about the future of our sport and it's catching up with the men quite quickly in terms of numbers and that's super exciting um it, In terms of um, nationally, we've had some junior national camps, the Fly Kids, which I've helped coach with for the past couple years, and um, really trying to get them, you know, dialed in um, with their passion at a young age. And it's not, um, you know, training them five hours a day, every single day to be be the perfect ski jumper, but just find those kids that have such a deep-rooted passion for the sport. And we definitely have some in the program right now with USA USA Nordic and um, you know, if it's not 2022 that we're sending, um, a perfect team, I think, um, 2026 is definitely looking really good for a lot of our juniors. Cool. Sir, are we going to see you up on the jump again? So, um, I, as I mentioned before, I did have to have a back surgery in December. I was coming back last year, intended on competing this last season, but, um, I figured out that my extreme back pain was actually real and needed to have a surgery so I've just been recovering from that and of course with coronavirus we don't really know exactly what's going to happen with some of these Grand Prix this summer and you know hopefully nothing gets affected this winter in terms of competition but we don't really know so my honest answer to that is um, just kind of waiting it out and um, I'm rehabbing and you know staying active I've always been a very active person so Um, We'll see where my back takes me in terms of pain and kind of decide that later in the year when things start to turn on again. Good. Well, we do hope we'll see you back up there. Just one last thing. As you look back over your, and, and, you know, you're only in your mid-20s, but I can say your long career as a ski jumper, what's one big takeaway that you can point to that's going to help you in life? Oh, man. I mean, that's why I'm so thankful for sports. I mean, I just grew so much as a person as I started to travel internationally. I was such a shy, shy kid. And I've just really, I feel like grown into a very outspoken and dedicated person. And I think, I think just how much grit that I've had to put through to get through my injuries and reach the results, maybe not so much, but the, um, you know, the Olympics and um, the World Cups that I have been able to compete in. Um, sometimes I look back and the results are not what I have always hoped for, but I've worked so hard and that dedication and grit will take me so much farther in life and in whatever I decide to do um, when I do decide to retire. So I'm very thankful for those opportunities. Grit is an amazing thing. <laughs> yes, it really is. Sarah, thanks for joining us. 
Absolutely. Thank you. Sarah Hendrickson, it's been great to reminisce with you. And don't forget to check out the Fist Ski Jumping channel on YouTube this Friday for a Classics Live re-air of Sarah's historic victory and hill record in Prodazzo in January of 2012. Thanks for joining us on this Behind the Gold interview for USA Nordic. I'm Tom Kelly, and I hope to see you at the jumps very soon.